Hi, Frank Alexander here with Alexander Heating and Air. Just a quick lesson on how to uh, calculate superheat when working with a fixed bore piston air conditioning unit. Now, superheat by definition is the extra amount of heat that the freon absorbs after it's reached its saturation temperature. So much like in superheat, there's extra heat in the freon, and that's where what we're calculating. That's the design parameter of most fixed bore air conditioning units. On the evaporator side of the refrigeration cycle, the freon enters the evaporator coil and represented here in blue as a liquid freon. At the star, it boils, and the orange represents the vapor of the freon. So superheat definition, like we were saying before, Superheat is the amount of heat absorbed above the boiling point of the freon, so that's after the star. Proper superheat depends on how much heat is in the home and can be absorbed, and this is a function of the indoor room temperature and the indoor humidity. Proper superheat depends also on the outdoor temperature. So let's look at the effects on superheat. Higher outdoor temperature will give you a lower target superheat. A lower outdoor temperature will give you a higher superheat. A higher humidity will give you a higher superheat, and a lower humidity, by the same token, gives you a lower superheat. The indoor room temp also will give you a higher superheat with a higher indoor temp, and a lower indoor temp gives you a lower superheat. So calculating superheat. You know, superheat is just the simple subtraction of the final temperature less the beginning temperature, or T1 minus T2. This is your superheat across the evaporator coil. So we'll look at T1, that's the liquid temperature of the freon entering the evaporator coil, and T2 is the gas temperature leaving the evaporator coil. Getting to T1, well, that's a little easy. You attach your gauges to the air conditioner. You turn, make sure the air conditioner is on and running and has settled down. You read the pressure from the gauge, your low pressure gauge, and you convert that on your te temperature chart using you know, your pressure temperature chart, and in this case, you write down your T1 temperature. Uh, for this example, we're looking at 70 PSIG, and the temperature represents 41 degrees. So what does T1 represent? Well, we need to know the temperature of the freon before it boils into a gas. This is the T1 temperature. T1 is a known value once we know the pressure in the suction line. And T1 is read right off a of pressure temperature chart or off the pressure gauge as indicated. Now getting T2, we're going to need a temperature probe. We attach that to the suction line. The temperature probe is actually going to read right to your multimeter and give you the temperature of the gas freon as it leaves the evaporator coil. In our example, we're going to use 54 degrees. So what does the T2 represent? You need to know what temperature the freon is when it finishes and exits the evaporator coil. T2 is that temperature. It's a measured value from the suction line. It can be higher than the pressure temperature chart because it has absorbed the room heat and become superheated and needs to release this heat. So the final superheat calculation is a simple subtraction. In our example, it was 54 degrees minus 41 degrees equals 13 degrees superheat. Now there you have it, superheat. Now don't go running out and trying to use that calculation to uh, determine whether or not your refrigerant's high or low. Uh, that's only part of the equation. Uh, the other part we'll get to in part two, adding Freon to your system.